If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light Give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe when your days down here are through There's a place up there for people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve And if you're trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved There's a place for people like you Streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your days down here are through There's a place Up there For people like you It is good to give thanks. 
reverence unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto the Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning, and thy faithfulness in the night. The Lord is our refuge and strength, a present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, for He is our refuge. This morning we are gathered here for this special service as we reflect upon the life of Dr. Rose Nedrick Thompson. We welcome you to this service and we ask that as we come to celebrate her life, that we will give God the glory and the thanks and gratitude for all his blessings. So let me invite you to join in singing the hymn, My Heart Can Sing, but I pause to remember it is in the program. Thee that we are still alive. 
We thank you for your protecting care over us during this time. We are praying now that at this moment we lift our thoughts even the word that we may receive from you blessing from above. We pray now for this waiting congregation to listen to our point. But now, Lord, we pray for uh, our deceived family, Sister Thomas and his children who love, who love their children so much, and they love her. But we know that death separates us now, but we are joyful, we know that we can lift our, we can lift our, our thought about be with this waiting congregation as we listen to your word and as we partake of this service. May your blessing may be upon us continually. Do for us what we, are, what we cannot do for us and what you ask us to do, help us to do it willingly. We pray for our minister who will continue to serve you gladly, Heavenly Father. May your spirit may be with him as he deliver your word. Thank you for what you're doing and still doing for us. Thank you for your forgiveness and help, Lord, that we may continue to um, give you thanks and give you the honor and the glory due to thy old, high and holy name. And as we leave here to the, to the burial, may your spirit may be with you and protect us as we go along this journey. These are the mention mercy I do beg in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Be seated, please. The road that we all have to walk is the road of sorrow, pain, and death. And this is the reality today as the Thompson family, the Cards family, uh, go through mourning. And it is part of our experience that we can't get away from, but we have the assurance that death is not the final for those who are in Christ, those who die in Christ. There is a blessed hope. And so today we are going to be reflecting on the life of Sister Thompson. There are many individuals who have come, friends and well wishes, family members who have come from near and far to share these moments as a means of encouraging the family. And we thank you for having made it here. We're going to uh, follow through with the program as outlined, and we're going to ask that if your name is there, please make yourself ready for whatever you are asked to do. And we're going to ask that we now have the first lesson from Revelation 21, verses 1 to 5, will be read by Kimberly Fearing, granddaughter, and then selection by Mrs. Carcel Ricketts. You may come and use the lectern. No, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write these words are true and faithful. Shall we praise the Lord? The word of God says that in the midst of life there is death. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When peace like a weaver
having lived 84 years, it would not be nice to know that it is not well with such persons. So, uh, Sister Thompson believed in the Lord and lived for the Lord. And uh, we don't know the destiny of anyone, but we believe that everyone who has surrendered his life to the Lord and has lived for the Lord has a great hope of eternal salvation and redemption and we put all in the hands of the Lord I it is also a question in that song for all of us who are here alive is it well with our souls it is a question that each one of us need to answer have I done what ought to be done in rectifying my account with the Lord you know somebody spoke to me just since week to pray for a relative for he got up in the morning and suddenly something happened um, he's knocked out unconscious and is in the hospital and um, you know a relative said you know I have been talking with him about giving his life to the Lord the truth is that no one knows what happens the next moment and that's why it's always best to make every effort to give God first place in our life so that it can be well with our souls we are going to go now into the other items the second lesson to be read by Nikisha Allen granddaughter from 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 58. And then we will have an item from Mount Salem Primary and Infant School. And then tributes from Jamaica Constabulary Force, from Mr. Towain Watson, and from Johns Hall SDA Church. The second lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 to 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as we know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen.
My colleague, Miss Almarine Thompson, I dedica dedicate this song to the family. Weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Tears often fall on my face in sorrows, and as I walk on through the long, lonely nights. Often I cry, but it seems no one hears me. Then through the shadows, I can see the dawning of light. Oh, soon this soul life will all of its trials will be left behind there's a new day adorning the shadows of sin will vanish forever he promised me there's gonna be joy in the morning Tears often fall on my face in sorrows. No broken heart will find up there beyond the sky. My mansions are waiting, but by the light of the morning, We'll sing the song of sweet victory. Oh, soon this old life, with all of its trials, will be left behind. There's a new day adorning the shadows of sin will banish forever. He promised me there's gonna be joy in the morning. Hold on my child, joy comes in the morning. We Hold on, my child. 
joy comes in the morning. The darkest storm in start is trust inside. Hold on, my child. Joy comes in the morning. Weeping only lasts all the night. Hold on, my child. Joy comes in the morning. The darkest storm in dark is trust inside the dawn inside. I see the light. Hold on, my child. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm here standing to give a remembrance or tribute to Sister Thompson. She was my best friend at church. I knew her from she came to Judge Gall to live. Her children and my children grew up together. She was a deaconess at church. We never have anything. She was away. We keep in touch. She was a lovely lady. She always called me and I called her. I dearly missed her. And may her soul rest in peace. I know the children will miss her soul, especially Ivan, her last child, <laughs> where she always connected to. So she always wants the children to be in one and to accept the Lord. May you do so and be of your mother who lies here so that you can get peace of comfort from the word of the Lord to you to be continued in the pathway that someday you might see her if you live according to. Be of good courage because that was one of the texts. It was Psalm 27 the last time when I spoke and went to visit her. She wanted us to sing it and to read for her. I was the one that go and visit her. And we, she asked for it. Psalm 27, the last verse. And it was a part of it is for be of good courage. That was the last time she always wanted to hear from her church family. She Amen. always asked me, how is the church? And I would fill her in with the good and with the indifference. And she have a nice laugh at all times and would say, boy, them not easy. <laughs> Remember that smile she always have and that laugh. This is what I want. Be of good courage. There is singing up in heaven such as we have never known. There the angels sing the praises of the Lamb upon the throne. Their sweet hearts are ever tuneful and their voices always serve the masters here Yes. 
sing this song. We have come to tribulation to the land so fair and bright. In the fountain freely flowing, He has made our garment white. Holy, holy, what the angels say, and I expect to help them make the courts of heaven ring. But when I sing redemption. Story, there will go their way. For angels never felt the joy that our salvation brings. When the angels stand and listen, for they cannot join that song. Like the sound of many waters, by the happy blood was thrown. For they sing about great triumph, battle fought and victory won. And they praise the great Redeemer, who has said to them, well done. And I expect to help them make the courts of heaven ring. But when I sing redemption story, they will fall their wing. For angels never felt the joy that our salvation brings. Do I'm not an angel, yet I know that over there I will join the blessed chorus that the angels cannot stray. I will sing about my Savior who upon dark Calvary freely pardoned my transgression. I to set a sinner free. Holy, holy is what the angels sing, and I expect to help them make the courts of heaven ring. But when I sing redemption story, that hangs over this place in which we are here assembled. So strong that it touches the heart of everyone, some to a greater level. Of course, you all know what I am talking about. It's that feeling of sadness and great loss, a feeling that brings back pain to our hearts. No, it's not the first we are experiencing this feeling. We have all lost ones before or a debt, and it's still a painful thing for us to remember. But why should it be for me when I have not been in recent touch with my cousin Gurley? Well, it is because the days of our togetherness were so wonderful and lasting. The closeness we had before, and I look back and remember the times of childhood into a young adulthood that store memories that have not and will not be forgotten. Though a little older than high, I age was not a factor, as we roamed and played and fun together in the community of Tucker, a relationship that followed us into adulthood. But life's journey eventually took us over different ways, and contact become less frequent. 
but never to be served for me. She was and always be a lovely and true champion. Of course, I do not speak for myself alone, but for other members of the immediate family, for their experience with Cousin Gurley was no different. If Ma Ina was able to express herself, she would refer to her niece as a kind, considerate, hardworking, ambitious, and determined person. And she loves her siblings. We all loved and appreciate her. We are sad to see her go, but we are left with wonderful memories and are sure her rewards await her on that special day. Take your rest, Daphne Thompson. We will remember you with lasting fondness from the Johnson family. Must have been cold there in my shadow to never have sunlight on your face. You were content to let me shine, that's your way. You always walk.
Sadly missed by Mama. She was a mother to all of us. And I'm here to give a tribute. To keep you calm and just relax in your storm. Okay? Have you a river you cannot cross a mountain so hard to climb Have you a valley You can't go through Hold on Till Jesus comes Just hold on Oh I know someday, someday, hold on, hold on, Jesus will come. When life had its heartaches and sorrows, when loved ones are taken away. He's so empty without her, but hold on, Jesus will come, just hold on, hold on, just hold on to that hard, rugged cross. I know someday, someday, hold on, hold on, Jesus will come, Jesus will come. Good morning, everyone. So, Sister Thompson was a very good friend of mine. I had the privilege to be with her in the same Sabbath school class at my home church. And she has always been that wonderful friend of mine, that nice smile that she wears whenever she's at home. It's always brightened my day. And you know, even classmate and all of the vibes. So we just hope that as you go through your trying times, you will allow Christ to take control. Once I wandered in sin, black night, oh, there was no way to make my wrongs right. Then the old accuser to the Lord did 
cry he is but a sinner and now he must die then I hear a voice saying Father I'll go and I pace in that on Calvary's cross and I bury my body to the mark of the cross to save that child who is sin sick and lost and needs still the blood that saved from sin who it still the blood that cleanses of the sea it is still the blood of Jesus that bring victory to me there are those who rely and work that they do while some men count on the time they And victory is won. I go home to my father through the blood of the land, and it's still the blood that saved from sin. Oh, it's still the blood that cleanses. This next song is dedicated to everyone that is here. I must extend my condolences to all family, family, friends, and all well wishers. You may feel down and feel like God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you cannot get through and right now it feels there's no way out and you're going under god's proven times and times again and he'll take care of you and he'll do Just take a look at where you are now and where you have been. And he always come true for you. He's the same now and then. Don't you know my God hasn't changed? You may not know how 
You may not know when, but he'll do it again. Sing along. He'll do it again for you. He'll do it again. Just take a look at where you are now and where you have been. And to your come true for you he's the same now and then don't you know God has not changed you may not know how you may not know when but he'll do it again bless the Lord somebody bless the Lord I'd like to greet everyone warmly and sincerely in the precious name of Jesus. He's the only one who has ever declared truthfully that he has conquered death. In this situation then, he's the only answer. All are grieving and I just trust that we will take him as our hope and be encouraged. Here now the eulogy for the life of Daphne Rose Nedrick Thompson. It was Carson who said, how can the dead be truly dead when they still live in the souls of those who are left behind? It is with great honor and pride that I accept the task to share with you and celebrate the life of an exemplary, extraordinary and adorable woman, Daphne Rose Nedrick Thompson, affectionately known by her children as Mama and by friends as Girlie, was born to parents Leonard Nedrick and Margaret Johnson on January 1, 1938 at Tucker District, St. James. She was their first child and was indeed a bundle of joy. At about nine years of age, Gurley was sent to live with Aunt Sis at Somerton, where she attended the Somerton All-Age School. After completing All-Age School, Auntie P, another aunt of hers, enrolled her in an embroidery class. After doing embroidery for a while, Gurley displayed an interest, though, in cooking. That was her love. And it was noted that she was better at cooking than at embroidery. Hence, she practiced this for a while. And anyone who has sat at her table can testify that indeed it's a delight. Mama, girlie, Daphne, started her own family at an early age and soon realized that family had great financial demands. As a result, her entrepreneurial skills came to life. She became a successful shopkeeper for years at Tucker. It was during this time that she met and fell in love with Winston Thompson, a builder from St. Elizabeth. Captivated by her warm personality, compassionate spirit, encouraging behavior, and tenacious attitude, he couldn't resist getting down on his knees and popping the question, and the rest is history. They got married, left Tucker, and established their home in the quiet community of Johns Hall, where they resided for several years. There, they later became members of the Johns Hall Seventh-day Adventist Church. Winston, her husband, would volunteer to work on the church on Sundays, while Daphne was a deaconess and took delight in helping in the preparation of church for worship on Saturdays. Daphne was an ardent deaconess for several years and did her work diligently. Girlie, always early for church and well attired too. She took pride in her attire. She loved God and her church and would always encourage her children to stay in that path. Her children had to attend church and she taught them how to pray. She was a praying mother and a faithful wife. 
Being at John's Hall, Daphne earned the respect of her community members. It was evident that Gurley loved people and she was always ready to give of her time and to give of her means. She was a generous soul who never missed an opportunity to help anyone who was in need. No matter how difficult the situation, she would try to find a way to help. She was the guiding light for her family. She set an example of what a good mother, wife, and friend should be. Having made clear that giving up was not an option, she would teach her children to persevere in whatever task they were embarking on. In 2005, her beloved husband, Winston, became ill and died just a year later. In 2007, she decided to reside with her daughter, Yvonne. But every Friday, she would return to her home to prepare for Sabbath, making it easier for her to fellowship with her brothers and sisters at church on the Sabbath. In 2014, a new chapter of her life began when she migrated to the United States of America to live with her son, Horace. She was elated to go to different places with him. He ensured that she was dropped off for church every Saturday. It was a treat to receive her pictures from overseas, showing off her gorgeous outfits worn to church. From time to time, she would return to Jamaica to visit her children and grandchildren. One would clearly visualize the glow on her face. It was a reciprocal moment for all. Over the last three years, as a result of the pandemic, she traveled less frequently. She really missed her trips. In January 2022, she became ill and was hospitalized in the Jacksonville, Florida. The entire family became very distraught due to test results which proved the illness was due to cancer. Since most of her children reside here in Jamaica, the decision was made for her to return home. She returned home on the 22nd of January, and on February 16, 2022, she was hospitalized at the Cornwall Regional Hospital. She spent a week in the hospital and then went home. And on Friday, February 25, 2022, the children heard her praying and glorifying God. One of the Psalms she repeated was Psalm 27. It reads, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Verse 4 says, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. That she did all the days of her life. She told her granddaughter that they were both going to a wedding. We all know what that wedding is. For the bride is making ready. And it will be such a day when they consummate over on that side. At approximately 8.55 p.m. on February 25. 2022, Mama, Gurley, Daphne passed peacefully at home. She leaves to mourn five sons, Morris, Norman, Renton, Anthony, and Horace. Six daughters, Paulette, Elaine, Jennifer, Beverly, Almarine, and Yvonne. One brother, Renton Tokes. One aunt, Ina. 25 grandchildren, 18 great-grandchildren, and nieces, nephews, cousins, church family, and a host of other relatives and friends. As the brilliant, shining sun squeezes its way between sky and the sea at the end of its day, one's life as surely as the sun has its sunrise and it has its sunset. So shall the sleeping saints rise majestically because Jesus, the Son of Righteousness, rose from the dead. And we, which are alive and remain, shall meet our Lord and Savior. That decision is made now. Weeping endures for a night, 
but joy comes in the morning. Daphne, girly, mama, you're greatly missed. What you leave behind is woven into the lives of all of us. This is not a goodbye. You will remain alive forever in our hearts until we see you again in the flesh. God bless you. I can take a heart that's broken, make it over again. But I know a man who can. I can take a soul that's in sick. Make it whiter than snow But I know a man who can Some call him Savior The Redeemer of all men But I call him Jesus my dearest friend and if you feel no one can help you and your life is out of hand I know a man who can I can't walk upon the waters I can calm the raging sea Yes, I know man who can I can't cause blind eyes to open Or make the lame to walk again But I know a man who can some call him savior the redeemer of all men but i call him jesus for he's my dearest friend and if you feel no one can help you and your life is out of hell i know a man who can yes i know a man who can yes, Certainly, we know a man who can help us in these times when we are mourning the loss of our loved ones. It's so wonderful to see God's people coming to share with our brothers and sisters who are grieving. And I am happy to see Dr. Walker. Welcome back. A man who is from the West and he is also a relative of the, the deceased. Today, I just want to take another, uh, another 15 minutes to share a word from the Lord. And uh, before I do so, I just want you to know that the Johns Hall Seventh-day Adventist Church family uh, grieve with you who are mourning. And we are praying for the family in your moment of loss. Let's bow our heads to prayer. Father in heaven, 
we are so grateful that no matter what we face, you can help us. So even now as we take these moments of reflection, looking at the life of the late Sister Thompson, give us the assurance of your presence and your blessings and that you will speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Life is about winning and losing. No one really enjoys losing. We all like to win, don't we? We all like to win. The truth is that there are more losing than winning in this life. Take for instance in a race. Only one wins. Or you can take for sake those who are involved in illicit activity of gambling. Only few win. Life is about winning and losing. The truth is it is inevitable to live without some losing. We lose our sight. We lose our hearing. We lose our strength. We even lose our hair, our teeth. We lose our health. And unfortunately, sometimes we lose our mind. We lose our job. We lose our car. We lose our house. We lose our loved ones. Life is full of losing. Why? It is because of sin. As long as sin is present, there is losing. That's what God said to Adam in Genesis 2 verse 17. That the day that you eat of that tree which I told you not, you're going to surely die. You're going to lose. Proverbs 14.34 tells us that righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So wherever there is sin, there is losing. So until sin is eradicated from our planet, we are continually going to lose a lot. Sin is destructive. It is corrosive and abrasive. It is brutal and destructive. Sin is contagious and disastrous. Sin is a dreadful thing that has come to this human race because of disobedience. It is no doubt that Adam, when he looked at what happened to him, afraid to accept what he did, when God asked him, what have you done? He just passed the blame to his wife. When his wife was asked, what have you done? She passed the blame to the serpent. Because when sin has done damage, we don't like to accept that we are a part of the problem. We tend to pass the buck to someone else. But David when Nathan spoke to him about his evil deeds, he acknowledged his wrong. And in Psalm 51 verse 1, he said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. You see, with sin, we're all going to lose. And there is no way we can get out of this game as losers unless someone helps us. I'm glad that help has already come. Jesus came to give us help so that we don't have to remain losers forever. We can be winners. In John 10 verse 10, Jesus said, I am come to give life and to give it more abundantly. Yes, that's what Christ came to give, life. Not just the bios, the physical life, but the zoe, 
the spiritual life, the eternal life. He wants to make us winners. Because sin is a deadly thing. It causes pain and misery. Just think of our brothers and sisters over in Ukraine and in other places who are displaced, who are miserable, who have to run and leave their family members, their possession, who don't know where the next meal may come from or what they're going to face the next moment. Think of how many have lost their loved ones tragically. Think of a mother who has lost her only child. Think of a child who has lost both parents in days apart. It's a deadly thing called sin. Sin caused brokenness and sorrow, danger and distress. Sin caused disaster and destruction. Sin caused tragedy and death. But with Jesus, there is hope. We lose with sin, but with Jesus, we gain. Because Jesus gives hope, he gives peace, he gives healing, he gives deliverance, he gives salvation, he gives restoration. In Jesus, there is winning, there is victory. And that is why it is always best to choose to be on the side of Christ and not on the side of sin. On the side of sin is Satan and his evil angels and all those who are his confederates and his mercenaries. But on the side of Christ, we have the Holy Spirit enabling us to understand what salvation is all about. On the side of Christ, we have the Holy Bible that is the written message from God about his love for humanity. That he has sent his son Jesus Christ to die for us, to redeem us, to restore us, to make us winners and not losers. It is this that John spoke about. When one day he was banished as a loser, he had been beaten up by the Roman emperor, had been thrown in a pot of hot oil and speared by the mercy of God, and then taken and just abandoned on this rocky island called Patmos, hot, and it was harsh reality for him. But while he was there thinking about his own demise and thinking about what will happen to him and his own brothers and sisters on the mainland, Jesus showed up and told him, John, you are not a loser. You may have been beaten up by the emperor and you might have been thrown away by the emperor. You might have been persecuted and banished to loneliness. You have lost your possession, lost your family perhaps. But Jesus said, John, don't worry. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of hell and death. In other words, John, I have been there. I know what it means to be rejected, to be denied. I know what it means to be thrown away. I know what it means to be beaten up and treated harshly. I know what it is to stand alone having no one saying, spare him. But John, I have conquered death. I have conquered the grave. I have won the victory. And because I have won it, you too as my follower is going to be a winner. And that's the message to all of us today. We're going to be winners in Christ Jesus. We just need to put our lives in his hands. And it doesn't matter whether we have lost a possession, lost a family, or we've lost our health, or even lose our life. We are not losers in Christ. We are winners. We are conquerors, as a matter of fact, in Romans chapter 8. And I read from verse 31 to 35 and verse 37. Paul echoed these words because he had been there himself through the thick and the thin. He asked the question in verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? In other words, if God could allow his son to go through the sufferings of death so that he could win us and make us winners, will he not do it for every single one of us who are called by his name, who have been washed in the blood? Yes, he will. He will. Paul says, 
Oh, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justified. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. In other words, God is making all the preparation. He is doing everything necessary so that you and I can be victors, can be winners. He has done it all. He has given his son Jesus Christ, allowed him to go through the suffering. And no wonder Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. But praise God, because he suffered, we have healing that is possible for us. So then Paul asked another question in verse 35. Who shall separate us? From the love of Christ. Shall tribulation. Or distress. Or persecution. Or famine. Or nakedness. Or peril. Or sword. Oh my brothers and sisters. He says not at all. None of these things shall separate us. None of these things can prevent us. To be conquerors. None of these things can prevent us. To be winners. He says no. Not at all. For in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. Oh my brothers and sisters, if we could only understand that what we go through now is just a temporary experience. What we pass through now, the tears may flow, our hearts may be broken and we're grieving. Yes, we pass through these things, but we will not be in it forever. Because in Christ Jesus, there is victory, there is hope, there is a winning that will happen. But we have to have Jesus on our side in order to be winners. For those who are not on the side of Christ... Those who don't have Christ with them and in their lives, they are going to be losers. They are going to be losers. Losers. And the worst losing is yet to come when the pearly gates are closed and you can't get in. When the condemnation and the final death blow is given of hell's fire. But those who are on the side of Christ, they have already been promised victory. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And John, in the vision that he had, he echoed these words in his vision in Revelation chapter 7. My closing text. In Revelation chapter 7, and I'm reading verse 9 and verses 13 to 17. After this, John said, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindred and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. These are symbols of victory. Symbols of victory. Where are they? Before the throne. They have passed through the tears and the mourning and the grieving. They have passed through the the, through the persecution and the famine and the distress and the brokenness and the losing. They have passed through all of these. Now they are they're before the throne of God, dressed in white robes with palms in their hands. And then one of the elders asks in verse 13, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? Then the answer came in verse 14, and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. He said to me, These are they which have come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. And John says, all of the bad things that have happened to them before will be no more. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them any more. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears 
from their eyes. Oh, my brothers and sisters, until God gets rid of sin, we'll have to go through the struggle. Until God gets rid of sin, we will have to continue to endure the pain and the hardship and the losing. But the day of victory is just about here. Jesus is coming soon. He says, behold, I am coming quickly. And uh, when he told John that, that was more than 2,000 years ago. So I know this quickly must be so much more quickly now. He is near. He's coming back. What do I need to do then is to be on the side of Christ. To accept him as Lord of my life. So whether I live until he comes or I die before he comes, it doesn't matter. Because victory is not about your physical state. Victory is about your spiritual state, your spiritual connection. That's what matters. And those who are in Christ will be around God's throne one day. And so I want to say to you family members, while you grieve, remember that you can be a victor. You can be a winner in Christ Jesus. Trust the Lord. Place your hand in his hand. Have your confidence and trust in him. Lean on him. Allow him to be Lord of your life. And what a day that is going to be. When Jesus comes back, we are going to be with him. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God for Jesus and what he has done for us. I'm going to ask at this time that the family members remain seated and the rest of the congregation stand as we have this special prayer for the family. The rest of us will stand while the family remains seated and we will pray for the bereaved family. Let us pray. Father in heaven, how grateful we are that in spite of what Havoc sin has rained upon us. In spite of the pain, the sorrow, the distress, the losing of our loved ones, Lord, which is so hard to bear, we have a blessed assurance in Jesus. So into your hands now, Lord, we place the family of the late Sister Thompson children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, cousins. Lord, we place every family member and ask that your arms of love will stretch around them again once more. Give them the comfort, the peace, the assurance, the courage, the strength to persevere, to hold on. Oh Lord, we pray that your peace will be upon them. That even when their mind feel troubled by the loss, they will remember that you're a loving God who cares for your children. So bless them, oh God. Keep them in your grace. I pray that each family member will so live that through the mighty power of your Holy Spirit, they will make it through the pearly gates. I pray for all of us who have come to share this moment with them. That we will choose you as Lord if we have not yet done it. And for those who have already accepted you, may you help everyone to hold on to you firmly to the end. We long to get out of this world where there is so much losing. We want to be home with you. May this be the experience of all of us here today. This is our prayer and our asking through the precious name of Jesus. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. We're going to sing the recessional hymn. There is a key that may have been misplaced or lost by someone. So if you have lost a bunch of keys, about seven keys on the bunch, please contact us, me or Elder Leslie, so that you can get your keys. So let's stand together as we
sing the recessional hymn great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness we're going to uh, ask that as we sing the chorus the chorus after the first verse we're going to ask the Paul bearers uh, to come by or the funeral uh, officials to come and to take the casket out so while we're singing the chorus after the first verse we will go from the platform and then the casket the family members and the rest of the congregation great is thy faithfulness let's stand together great is thy faithfulness O God my father there is no shadow of turning with thee thou changest no thy compassions they fail not as thou hast been thou forever will be great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all i have needed thy hands have provided great is thy faithfulness lord unto me before we sing the next stanza there's a bus that is provided to take those who would like to go to the place of rest that is at dove cut all right so please uh, take note of that let's sing the second verse summer and winter springtime and harvest summer and winter and springtime and harvest sun moon and stars in their courses above Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I sing. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and the peace that endureth. Thy own dear presence to chair and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings on mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Thank 
We can close it now and we will go straight across. Watch it.
put it up on the black roller. Stop, stop, stop. Right, right up oh, there. Oh. Yeah. Right up on there. Right, right. right up. Right. 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 Aren't we going to sing? Shall we gather at the river? And gentlemen, you are free to let it roll and go down. Shall we gather at the river where bright angels feet have trod? Shall we gather at the river where bright angels feet have trod? With its crystal tight forever, flowing by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints of the river that flows by the throne of God. On the margin of the river, on the margin of the river, washing up its silver spray, up its silver spray. We will walk and worship ever on the happy golden day. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints of the river that flows by the throne of God. Every rich the shining river, lay we every burden down. Grace our spirits will deliver and provide our robe and crown. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints of the river that flows by the throne of God. Of the smiling of the river, mirror of the Savior's face. Saints will set your ever if they have the gold of grace. Yes, we will gather at the river, the beautiful, beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river, soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver, melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather. The beautiful river, gather with the saints of the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river, soon our pilgrimage will cease, soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river, that flows by the throne of God. We have the beautiful promise that is given to us in the words of John when he said in vision, he saw a new heaven and a new earth. Yes, sir. And he said the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Yes, sir. There was no more sea. John said he saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride at dawn for her husband. He said he heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. 
They shall be his people, and God shall be with them and be their God. And that God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. So we know that whatever we go through now will not last forever. Death one day will be passed away. And God will take his people who have died in Christ, who have fallen asleep in Christ. He will raise them up to life eternal. And those who are alive when he returns will be caught up together with those who rise in the first resurrection. I pray that all of us, by God's grace, will so live for Jesus so that we will not be losers, but winners, victors. We shall overcome by God's grace. May all of us then experience the great and wonderful resurrection. For as much as God in his infinite mercy and love has allowed our sister Daphne Rose Nedrick Thompson to fall asleep in Christ and to lay down the burdens of this life. We do commit her body to the ground, dust to dust, earth to earth, ashes to ashes. And we know that there is a great hope in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are so grateful that you have given us a blessed hope that amidst the sorrow, the pain, the crying, death and grieving, we too, by your grace, through Jesus, can overcome. Oh, help us, oh Lord, that we'll be faithful. Be with the family. Give them courage and strength to hold on. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing a few choruses. Uh, they're going to cover up. Some sweet day I'm going away. I'm going to leave this world. No more to roam. Some sweet day when life is over. Some sweet day I'm going away. Some sweet day I'm going away. I'm gonna leave this world. No more to roam. Some sweet day when life is over. Some sweet day, I'm going away. I know where I'm going. I know. I know where I am going. I know. Happy children, I say. I know.
uh, Daphne Thompson that we appreciate your attendance, your visits, your calls, and your presence today in a way of cheering them up and encouraging them to go through the grieving. And we want to thank all those who have participated. May God bless you. And let's pray for the family because we have a great hope that one of these days we will be winners. Yes, sir. Not winners to lose again, but winners forever. Amen. Because Jesus has already won it yes, and he sir. will take us to his glorious home. Amen. May God bless you as we continue to keep the family in our prayer. Thank you so much.
to love and care for me when skies were gray. Whenever I was down, you were always there to comfort me. And no one else can be what you have been to me. You will always be. You will always be the girl in my life for all time. Mama. Yes it is. Oh, yes it is. Yes it is. Yes it is. Oh, you're always down for me. Have always been around for me, even when I was bad. You've shown me right from my wrongs. Yes you did, and you took up for me when everyone was down on me. You always did understand. You gave me strength to go on. There were so many times looking back when I was so afraid, and then you come to me and say to me I could face anything, and no one else can do what you've done for me. You'll always be. So